viewers, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. I am Coach Julia, and today I am sharing with you how I make my skating leggings. Now, a couple of weeks, I posted a reel on Instagram where I was making a pair of red skating leggings for the holidays, and so many of you were excited because you thought a tutorial was coming, and I really felt bad that I didn't film a tutorial, so I have done that. I made these leggings just for you guys so that I can show you how it's done. Now, when I made this design, I do the same design for all my leggings. There's three main things I wanted. I wanted them to come up to my waist. I wanted them to be seamless and I wanted them to go over the boot. Those are the three things that I wanted. So I converted a ready-made store-bought pattern so I could make this design. Now, since this is a little bit of a longer tutorial, I've divided it up into three chapters. The first one is how I made the pattern. The second one is cutting it out, and the third one is sewing it. So you can skip through, you can watch through, whatever you want, but it's divided into three chapters. Let's get started. This is the sewing pattern I started with. Now, I don't use this pattern anymore, but this was the basis for the leggings that I wear now. It is Simplicity. Uh, pattern number 8212 and there was a couple things that drew me to this pattern in particular if you look at the pattern instructions here you can see there's actually a couple of different options open up so you can see it a little bit more clearly there so this is the the main thing I liked it had a very plain legging but it also had both a hip height waistband and a waist height waistband. So I used this plain legging with a waist of up to the waist waistband. This is comes all the way up to my belly button. I have since completely modified this and I'm going to show you how I modified it. So let's talk about how to make this sewing pattern a, a over the boot skating legging. I started out with this sewing pattern. Okay, I have here view a the really simple one okay it doesn't have any of the, the little accents on the side this is the back okay so this goes you know here's your your butt right here okay there's the back and then this is the front okay so we have these two pieces that would sew together down this side seam now again i don't want this side seam so what I did is I made a pair of leggings with a side seam, I cut it out, I sewed it together, I sewed this whole side seam together and that gave me one piece. And then I used that to create this. So here we have the pattern I actually use. Now, you're gonna, if you do it this way, you're gonna notice that since these seams are curved, that when you sew it together, it has a little bit of a, rumple here okay it's gonna lift up because this is allowing for extra hip space the thing is you don't actually need that if you're working with stretchy stretchy fabric and the fabric I use is really stretchy so this extra curve if I turn it sideways you can see that there's a little curve over the hip and in making it with no side seam you eliminate this curve so you can make that choice if you want to have a side seam it maybe will help you if you have really full hips, although I have, you know, I'm a curvy person and I have a, haven't had any issue getting rid of this extra curve. So if you don't wanna make yourself an entire extra pair of pants and you want to get rid of the side seam like I did, what we can do is actually just pin it together and you're gonna pin it together at a seam allowance. So I use the extra small version, it fits me. With, of course, these are stretchy, so if you get anywhere close to your pattern size, it'll work, okay? You just have to have an approximation of your pattern size. But I know that I'm gonna use about this much here for my seam, because you use about a 5 8 seam allowance, so I'm gonna pin it down as if I'm sewing it. So this is copying my sewing seam. So I'm just gonna use these pins all the way down the side, and that will, uh, work instead of cutting it out of fabric and sewing it together. When you do this, make sure you're lining all the markings up so that you don't end up with a wonky pattern. You want all the little markings to line up. That's gonna help your pattern not get twisted. So my two pattern pieces are now pinned together along the side as if I had sewn it. And I can open it up and that gives me my sewing pattern for my one one piece seamless on the side pattern 
Now you could just lay this out on your pad on your fabric just like this, but I went a step further and made myself a nice reusable sewing pattern. So as you can see that there's a little bit of that excess in the middle because you're not uh, you're getting rid of that curve, okay? So what I would recommend now is that you either get some like gift wrap tissue paper and tape it together so you have a big sheet and then trace this or do what I did and use a piece of pattern cloth. This pattern paper has a one inch grid. It's not actually paper, it's kind of like a cloth. Uh, it, it, it's a very paper-like cloth and it has this nice grid on it so it's easy for measuring out adjustments and things and you can reuse it. it. Makes the pattern really sturdy so you can reuse it over and over and over again. But what I did is I laid out a big sheet of this pattern paper, I took my uh, leggings. So I had made basically done this with my leggings uh, with fabric, right? Sewed that side seam and then laid it down and then traced that and that gave me my sewing pattern. Okay. Don't worry about the little rumple in the middle. Just lay it out as smooth as you can. Get this top seam smooth, get the side seam smooth, and then don't worry about the little extra bit in the middle. It, it's a little curved but don't worry about it. And then you're gonna try to copy all your markings. So these little guys are gonna let you know, you know, it's gonna help you match your fabric up. So every, all the little markings you wanna transfer to your pattern paper. Okay, so this brings me to our over the boot section down here, which is the, I think the most confusing part. So this just comes to the ankle, all right? So this, is an extra small to the ankle, and you can see there's quite a bit of dif distance between this cutting line and that cutting line. So if we just lay this out right in the middle here, so right about the hem for the longest one. So this is the cutting line for, I think this is like extra large or something down here. So this lo lowest cutting line, you can see that the pattern starts flaring out. Okay, so instead of tapering into the ankle, it flares out so it can go over the boot. The first time I did this, I just eyeballed it and you can see it was nowhere near enough space. My first estimate was not right. So I will show you what I did. By the time we get to this bottom, we have, these are each an inch, so we have two extra inches that I added on. And then I added on another three and a half, you can see this marking, plus three and a half inches. So I taped that on with some tissue paper. So this is five and a half inches that I've added to the bottom of my seam. And then I happen to know that this is 13 and a half inches at the bottom, okay? So that was what I did for my pants. I, f I measured it out. So what I'd recommend you do is take your tape measure and you go five and a half inches and draw, okay? Draw a mark there and then you can, uh, you wanna take an angle out and give yourself 13 and a half inches. It's a little bit of an estimate, it's rough, but this fabric is stretchy, so it's gonna fit as long as you get it close, okay? So I took from the bottom of that seam basically copied this this line here again. So what you could do is just flip the pattern around and you're basically giving yourself that that same angle. It's pretty close, all right? If I, if I stretch this out, it's about the same angle as the, the leg, okay? So just you wanna get yourself about five and a half inches and 13, 13 and a half inches at the bottom. And that is gonna give you enough space to go over the boot. In addition to this pant leg, the over the boot pant leg, there's two more pieces, uh, pattern pieces that you're gonna want. So I have a waistband and I have a cuff, okay? So this, this cuff sews the bottom. So all I did was I measured it the same width, it's 13 and a half inches, and then this is three inches. So when it's folded in half, and I have a little seam allowance, I still have a little bit of extra space that's gonna pull down, kind of hook onto the bottom of your leggings. You want that cuff because it really helps kind of anchor your pants. So this is 
13 and a half inches by three inches, and that is my cuff. And then my waistband. Now you can use the waistband in your pattern, and I did use this quite a long time. Uh, here, you put it on the fold of the fabric, this little marking, let's see if you can see it. This little marking here tells you that it's going on the fold, so you're getting one long folded piece. Um, but for me, having it perfectly rectangular, my, I'm pretty curvy, and so this just sticks up from my waist a little bit. So I just copied it over and notched it in on the side. You can see there's a little notch between the, this is the back, this is the, like where your belly button is, this is the back, and it's notched in a little bit, and that helps it contour to my body. But if you don't wanna do that, that's fine. You can just use this pattern piece. It just makes it a little bit easier, less pattern pieces to cut out. It's gonna fold in half, and so this is gonna be the, the height of your waistband. Now that we have our pattern modifications out of the way, let's talk about what kind of fabric you're gonna to wanna to use to make these skating leggings. So here I am at one of our big box stores, big box craft stores, and this is two uh, bolts of fabric that I often use for uh, skating leggings. You can see I'm actually in an aisle that's all stretchy fabrics. Some of them are not appropriate and some of them are. Like this one is really thick and I could definitely make leggings out of this thick pink one. I don't know that that's exactly my style, but I could do it. So I'm gonna get this blue, it's got a cool little snake print to it. I've done the black version of these before. It's a really thick. It is a 80% polyester, 20% spandex. So it's really stretchy. It's considered athleisure, athleisure uh, but it's really heavy. I often will use the Performance uh, Microflex Compression Legging. That's what I use for my red Christmas ones. They are also 80% polyester, 20% spandex. So you're looking for something with that ratio. 80% polyester, 20% spandex. That's really thick. Usually it's called a performance knit, and that way when you do your sit spins, you do squats, it's not gonna stretch and be thin in the back. Another place I like to get fabric is an website called Spandex House. So up here, um, I, we are gonna scroll over to solids and you can see heavy performance. Click on that and it's gonna give you a number of different colors. They're not quite as fancy as what you can get in a box store. They're just solids, but there's a big variety. Uh, so if you look at this one, I love this color. It is 80% nylon, 20% spandex so it's going to be really stretchy again now this one is nylon rather than polyester but that's fine it still has that kind of ratio and that heavy performance fabric is going to be thick enough to skate in without getting stretchy and see-through besides your pattern your fabric of course you're going to want some scissors to cut the whole thing out you're going to probably need a measuring tape to fix the pattern to fit you perfectly you can use pins and i use weights these are little felt backed weights when I'm cutting it out, it just makes it fast so I don't have to pin each thing on and then unpin it and then pin it again to sew it. So I cut them out with weights and then I use the pins to hold the pieces in place when I'm ready to sew. Of course, you're also gonna need some thread that matches your fabric. Okay, now we've got our fabric, we've got our pattern. It is time to cut this out. So we're going to lay it out so that it has a fold on one side. So this is a you can see there's a little fold in the fabric there. Okay, and we're gonna leave that fold. We're gonna use that for our waistband. We're gonna put that, see I, I copied all of those markings. So you can see that this is telling me to put this edge on the fold. So I'm gonna put that edge right there on the fold. Grab my pattern weights just so it's easy. There we go, and I'm gonna cut that out. The nice thing about working with really stretchy material like this is it's pretty forgiving. So if you get the pattern close to your size, even if it's not exact, you'll probably still be able to wear them. As you practice, you can refine it and make it exactly how you want it as far as the sizing and shaping. But as long as you get it somewhere close. So I'm going to Get this ready for sewing by flipping it inside out so now that nice side is hidden. I'm just going to pop a couple of pins into this side seam and that way when I move to my machine 
this guy's ready to go. Now I apologize, this, my camera angle is, I need a little bit more distant. It's not quite far enough to be able to show you the whole thing at once, but I'll do my best. So I am laying this out. Now, the nice thing is there's this grid, right? I talked about that grid. So if you wanna be really, really particular, we can take our measuring tape and measure one of these lines and the distance from the edge of our selvage. And then we can move down and make sure that that line is staying parallel to the selvage. You don't want it twisting, otherwise you'll have some weird pulls in your pants. So you wanna get the line of your pattern to line up perfectly evenly. So this is seven and three quarters. And I wanna move up the fabric and make sure it stays, this line stays seven and three quarters away from my selvage to keep my pattern straight. My fabric is weighted and I'm ready to cut out my leggings. Now, I am using a yard and a half of this fabric. I found for me and my height and the length of these pants, that works perfectly. So, if you guys are gonna get yourself some fabric and work on this, I'd say go with about a yard and a half of fabric. As you practice, you might figure out you need a little less or a little more if you're pretty tall, uh, but yard and a half works for me. So this pretty side is the right side and this dull side is the wrong side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip right sides together and go ahead and pin that little side seam so that when I move to my machine, I am ready to go. The last thing we're gonna cut out is our legging cuff. Now this pattern to me has a direction to it. This snake print kind of moves this way. So I'm going to cut it out so that it copies the same direction as the leg. The leg, this is, this is the waistband right here of the leggings. And so it'll kind of just work with that. So there's two layers of this fabric. It's doubled that way. As I cut this out, I get uh, both sides cut at once. It's more efficient than laying it out flat and cutting each piece out individually. I am going to put the short sides together so that I can sew this little seam right here. So I'll just pin that. All right, so we're ready to move to the machine. Now my machine will do both serging and cover stitching, and we're gonna use both of them today. But since it's a little bit annoying to switch back and forth between a serging stitch and a cover stitch, or also known as a chain stitch and a cover stitch, we're gonna do all of the chain stitch first. So we're gonna start with, I've got my cuff. Remember there's that little seam allowance, so it's kind of trimming that seam allowance off. And we're gonna continue on with all of the other seams that I pinned. So both pant legs, both cuffs, and the waistband. Now we are ready to assemble the cuff. So we're gonna fold that in half so that the nice side is facing out and the two little seams are together. I'm just kind of trying to get those two edges to lay perfectly straight together so that this doesn't really get twisted. Now I'm gonna go ahead and match the center seam of the cuff to the seam on the pant leg. So I'm taking that outside of the pant leg, the pretty side, matching it up with the pretty side, the folded side of the cuff where the seams match, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pin it all the way around. You wanna make sure that you have the nice sides facing each other so that when you flip it out, the seam is hidden inside and the nice side is showing. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew both of these cuffs. Okay, cuff is done. So I have two assembled pant legs now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn those back around so that the seam is on the inside and we're looking at that right side, the nice side of the fabric. Now it's time to do that center seam of the pant. We're gonna take both pant legs, match the seam together, the leg seam in the middle and pin. And I'm gonna follow this curve around, pinning all the way around, matching up any little markings. So there's markings in the back and in the front to make sure that your seams are lined up perfectly. And every time I pin, I'm gonna match those up 
so that my seam is nice and straight and I don't end up with one side really short and the other side really long. The next step is to sew those two pant legs together. So we're doing that curved seam that runs front to back of your pants. So now you have two assembled legs. You just about have a pair of leggings. Now I don't like that when I'm wearing this, this seam gets a little bit stretched. So I like to reinforce it. And this is where the cover stitch comes in mind. So I'm gonna switch this over to cover stitch really quick. And then I am just gonna use my cover stitch to reinforce that center seam. I actually forgot to press film on it when I was doing it to the pants. So I'm doing it to the waistband. I don't usually do it on the waistband, but just so you can see how this works, I'm filming it on the waistband instead. So I'm gonna have a reinforced uh, center seam on my pants and a reinforced waistband. So you can see what that reinforced seam looks like. It's really nice. The seam now lays really flat and isn't gonna pull apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold this waistband in half. So I have a folded top edge and now I can attach it to my pants. This is the final step of making those pants, but I have to switch from that cover stitch back over to the chain stitch, the serger stitch. So we have that folded in half waistband. I'm gonna match those seams up really carefully in the back, and then I am gonna pin that just to anchor it so I don't have to try and hold it the whole time. And then I'm gonna take that reinforced seam on the waistband and match it up with the back of my pants, that same reinforced seam on the back of my pants so those line up really nicely and I'm going to pin that together and then I'll go ahead and pin the whole rest of the waistband to the pants making sure that I am following any little notches and markings and matching them to the notches and markings on the pants so that the pants sew together really smoothly on that top edge. So you can see that the waistband is folded in half and it's actually on the outside of my pants. So we have the nice side of the pants showing and then that folded waistband. So when the seam is done, it's gonna be hidden on the inside of those pants. You just wanna make sure you're double checking which side you're pinning things to so you don't accidentally have a seam sticking out on the right side or the nice side of your skating leggings. Now this is the last seam of these pants. We're about to have a finished pair of skating leggings. I love that I can knock together a pair of leggings in less than an hour now. So I've got it down to the point where if I want a new color, I see a fun fabric at the fabric store, I can create a new pair of leggings, have them ready in an hour, and be out on the ice practicing that same day. Okay, I hope you found that tutorial helpful. I know it's a little bit complicated, especially if you've never sewn before. If you've never sewn a pair of leggings, just grab a pattern and try your first one straight from the pattern. All of those patterns have instructions step by step through. So you can follow that and make it and you know, just have a nice ankle length pair of leggings to start with. And then you can step it up and start getting creative with the actual pattern so that it fits you exactly how you want. If you enjoyed this video, please do give us that thumbs up. And as always, I look forward to reading all your comments in that section down below. If you haven't done so yet, then hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell down in the corner so you can see all my videos when they come out. Happy skating, and I'll see you next time.